So we just do it for um, for this band but just um at the same validity strategy as uh, 20. 19 to 2024 plan strategy um, has guided sort of our direction in that space um, for the past five years. Um, as part of that, we've been measuring our emissions as council over the last five years. We set a lofty target of reducing our emissions as council by 55%. We just scraped in at 55, just over the 55% mark reduction um, in our core business that we do as council. And a number of projects contributed to that, but Gap capture of landfill we use, our organic um, projects for coal, reducing LPG, changing fuel pipes, and just things like that. So, that was just a great success to touch on. Next yes, slide. Going forward with that same sustainability strategy, um, coming to an end of it since life and being refreshed, um, we're pulling together a climate action plan, which is just pulling all the documentation that we have as a council together. We have Emissions management reduction plan. We have emissions inventory reports for each of what the council has produced. For emissions, we have uh, a report by the biggest plan subject that talks about the past, present, and future plan of potential cargo. We have infrastructure resilience on a cost plan. OFC does some work around what our district emissions are, taking in what sort of community emissions are. Um, so, just basically pulling everything that we do now in the one class. So how much the goals have cost? Uh, so we have been um, setting up um, our emission measurement um, that we audited at about twelve thousand dollars, but we're doing all that now. Then yeah, for a minute. What do you get back to twelve thousand dollars? Assurance that our calculation and measurement are over the vector and it's a performance measure in our annual. Um, report as well. Um, so there's the evidence that's showing that what we're actually measuring is correct and accurate. So is this, is this emissions admin solution or emissions admin CO2? Yeah. Yeah. And so we've been yeah, measuring our emissions with council for the last five years. Um, and otherwise, there was some cost increases in documentation and, and work like both scientific like reporting and like that. So that was 10 million? Um, that will cover hundreds of times the amount of time around the Yeah, I think that's on the report and review. Next slide, please. Um, so, as, as we move forward, um, we're going to talk around the week put inflation on things. Um, we have a comprehensive weight contract. Um, I just wanted to note that inflation is. Um, the, the red line there, um, we do the experience of having inflation tags on it, um, projects and costs and contract costs, CPI adjustments, so to speak, and um, the way to say um, we are seeing a, a higher inflation assumption through the local plan. So, so that's cost inflation zone? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All, all costs, is that the right answer? Uh, so that's sort of the show, that's sort of the borough adjustment inflation um, piece showing me that it shows that what the tag to Weights and what we're seeing in the increased cost is um, larger than inflation and growth in the weight space. So we have a contract, but collecting others, yeah. um, the additional cost we see year on year is a relation to growth and a relation of dead growth. So the amount of CO2 you put out isn't related to. No, not going to. It's dead growth from the dead growth. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we're talking about the sustainability bits and the analysis and the weight bits. So, um, there's a couple of aspects um, apart from inflation and growth that then they cut our waste costs. Do um, you want to jump to the next slide? Um, so, for waste disposal, so this is um, what we see in the landfill. There is waste completed and um, emissions traders getting popped on top of that um, inflation. Um, that's decent growth in the district. So, uh, a number of years ago, um, that weight levy cost was ten dollars per ton on every ton we sent to landfill. This year is an additional sixty dollars per ton, and then as we move through um, future years, that's going up by five dollars a ton. So, that money gets paid. The, the levy gets paid for the ministry as well. And then we have. Um, opportunity for applying funding from and through the environment, which we are 
So that's the waiting two years. Okay. There's also um, New Zealand units or the emissions trading scheme, and we um, pay a debt cost on every uh, um, material we send to landfill um, because of um, the gas capture and destruction system at the Victoria Plus landfill. That cost has reduced, but it is still a cost on the material we send to landfill. What happens to the gas capture that was used? So previously, the so that has tried to um, take the capture of the methane um, for the environment. And what are you doing with it? Uh, Is it used for you? Um, I'm not exactly sure how to break this, but it's not our process, it's the process that's in the process. We, it. we pay um, for the emission of, so we pay um, a fact from you, Rick, if you think we're able to do that, the emission. Is anybody sort of like question that we pay in CO2 and what we have to do with the plumber? That's not the same thing. We are paying for that. 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 We are paying for and processing the summary facility. Um, we're in the process of applying for our increased environment funding for support on our organics processing um, projects. And the key why that's important to us and get that established within our own district is a reduced that transport requirement. Um, so it's still the most effective solution for us in dealing with that project process on the same field, but having our own um, plants in our own district means we're not getting that outside our district and great things. When you do compost in the district, you can reduce the mm -hmm. district. Um, as opposed to some other materials that we have to leave in the district and place that um, on the floor. Next slide, please. So, capital budgets, one of the big capital budgets that relates to the, the, the district wide, or uh, the organic um, facility. And so, that's establishing our own process and facility within our district. We've applied for ministries and environment funding from. The Waste Minimization Fund. We've made it through the expression of interest rate and we've been invited to submit um, a business case, which is the last stage of the process. We have until a date like February to provide that and then kind of find out um, following that if we've been successful. Um, and we're looking at a 50% um, cost contribution from the Waste Minimization Fund. Mm -hmm. so we've got them back to provide the business rate. So Neighbouring yeah, council. Yeah, correct. Now. So um, we are looking at covering with the RDC around that. So essentially, um, ownership options will be looked at through this campaign, but um, partnering with the RDC to make a region for it. So we get um, to get it in. So it's a bit of a problem with our and um, our family. So where is that building? Uh, that's just an example of what that looks like. Oh, wow. um, that's the new one in summary. Um, so that is the series of fungus, um, and then you take the uh, put a year in or take the year out, um, and it shows the natural material done, um, and we we'll take a month process. Okay. Next slide, please. Rowan, right, jumping in. So, GPS, um, government policy statements for transport. So, um, that, that's just a snapshot there of um, sort of summary of, um, the strategic priorities from this updated um, policy statement for transport, but the real key focus um, that the government has for the guys the investment that we get is around increased maintenance, resilience, safety, and value for money. Um, so, how funding is being allocated? So, um, they're in sort of pots from NZPA with pothole prevention. So, that looks after our basically four roads. That's our steel road maintenance renewal, so fixing potholes, resetting roads, our own steel road maintenance, so remetling roads, as well as grading, and that sort of work, and the drainage support both of those um, activities. And then that um, ring heads, that, that fund. Um, local road operations, so that um, any structures maintenance, component we able to do, our environment maintenance, so winter maintenance, um, CMA, um, on road if we're going to slip free or on the road, um, tree trimming, everything like that. 
we created the network services, signed through like guardrail, line marking, um, those type of things. My weather event, so it doesn't trigger a need for emergency funding, that's where that has to come from, and network asset management. So that's both um, the team we have for council, um, our cloud program management for piece, and, and that's been um, all of um, the specialists we need, we need special bridging, we need to have a lot of time to have these bridging structure renewals. Um, so that's the full bridge replacement, um, and there's two of those tags for. Um, the next year and two years, and that's that three year piece. Walking and cycling, which is a footpath maintenance renewal, road safety promotion, and road health. So, we know the council has delayed long term plan by a year, and then it goes into a two year plan. With our bid to NZPA, it still had to go in last year. So, we technically are now approving this year one of a three year plan. So, mm -hmm. Going into the long term plan, we know what our annual plan funding we can get from NZPA is, plus we know what our next two years looks like. Um, and this shows here of over the three years, um, 24 through 27, what we applied for, um, how much of that was approved. So, a couple of key highlights is we applied for 3.17 million for new bridges. We received 1.6 million. Walking and cycling, we applied for 1.48 million for footpath maintenance or renewal. We've got 500,000. So that's when you say that's your request, that's your, your preferred work plan. Yep. And then, uh, so what happens now? In the bottom one, say you only got 500, they've only given you 500,000 of the So what do you say? We're going to cut the work plan by 90%, or are you going to cut? Quick round yeah. fifty percent. Right? No, um, so we'll, we'll jump to oh, pull out walking and cycling, pull out cycle road improvements. Um, because those are two that have the biggest impact. Everything else is close. Um, and we've had a conversation with council around those ones that are just out the local road operations at eighty three percent. We've had a conversation in that. Um, and then the bridge and structure renewals that actually align to um, we put in two bridge replacements. We received part of that. One of the bridges looked like that would be replaced to our bridging strategy. The other bridge had a lower level of service um, considerations part of our bridging strategy, so the funding actually aligns for what's in our bridge strategy. So when they turn you down, so to speak, yep. is it based on, oh, no, you're trying to do too many things, or not their priority? Not their priority. They've listed their priority, they're funding towards their priority, they've done this across the board. So, okay. yeah. Their priority is a national budget of 100 oh. million. Yep. And then I say we're going to give you one million. Yep. So the yeah. priority is still broken under. No one's even just thinking about the And they don't care about the fund. It's just the. It's funny yeah. yeah. the the yeah. walking has been so heavily promoted. No, but it's like mm. our, what they mean, and just our footpath. So our elderly people getting from the rest home to, you know, it's our footpath in town. But yeah. it's not walking track. No, no, no. But that, that, you know, we need our footpath. The, 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 last, the last two government policies have been okay. Or put a lot of funding towards and projects towards walking cycling. Um, this is the thing shift from that. That pendulum swing. Yeah. One government to another. But in the last few years, they haven't had our footpaths in, in town touch. And, and they're pretty rough for our old people. Yeah, like from that. Even with less of a priority, walking cycling footpath making sure your budget tax and money. So yeah, when you've got a requested allocation there, yeah, the bottom one, yeah. is yeah. is that how much it's going to cost in total, or is that fifty percent of the cost? That's the total. That's so total. fifty-one forty-nine. So forty-nine percent of those numbers we want council that um, we and that's what we put up in the December bid. There was a slight change through the annual plan around removing some of those projects that we bid to NDCA for because. NDCA funding has going quite early. So that 11 million did look a little bit different going into the annual plan in terms of progress. But that included um, bridge clip ons, a cycle bridge and Clyde, and the priority shift. So well, that's the total cost. Yes. Yeah. So at the very top one, the government are going to pay the 97% of all the costs. Ah. Uh, this year. This year. 51 cents. So, the not 47 percent of 51 cents. Yes. So, the actual cost is not 21,625, it's double that. Uh, no, that is, that is so. 
the 24, 27 concurrent allocation in the UK with a 51% of that number. Of that number. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, so they're not going to give you 2107. No. They're going to give you 51. Yeah. Gotcha. And the tax would fund 40 months then. Now, tax would pay one lot, you know, rates pay the other. True. Yeah. 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 So, petrol tax. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, across the three years. Um, so, the top top of these bars is what we asked for. Um, and then, so that is the missing bit with that reduction from our right. DTA. So, that's what we have worked out that we need for a bronze level of investment, which is still low for foot pass, very low for foot pass. And that's given the guidance of the GPS and everything like that. Yeah. It's still going to result in a level of service reduction. At the moment, that's where we mm -hmm. hoped, um, well, that's where we've ended up about 68% of what we asked for. Um, and we would have been talking with council and part of this um, presentation council was around asking council to fund that missing subsidy that we did not get. From NZTA. And, um, and do, they, do they look at it and go, like, across the board, we're going to do that, whatever that top one was, yeah. 90%, 97%, everything we get asked for, we're going to do nationally? Or do they look at your actual request and go, oh, we don't think you should be doing that one and that one and that one? How does that work? I, I think there's a little bit both of that, yeah. particularly when you get projects. Um, and that our job and our investment advisor. From NCTA and working closely with them and making sure they understand where our priorities are. Um, but in some instances, um, and Peter, I'm sure you probably talked to this, is some people receive similar sort of cuts across sort of the Tiger or Southland as foot pass got cut by everyone kind of got the same letter. Yeah. yeah. So, what does this mean for us? Next slide, please. Next slide. Um, so, at a bronze level investment, and that's what council made the decision to top up that missing subsidy, that there's an indication over the 10 years of the condition of our footpath. So, at the bottom, the um, teary colour is good. The grey is fair, the darker grey is poor, and then there's a strip along the top of very poor. Even a bronze level investment by 26 27, our footpath will be fair or worse. Um, Watch, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's the condition of our footpass with the top up level of investment. This is the challenge that we had. Mm. Um, we have to only prioritise safety risk. I don't want to go over here now. That's quite good. Wow. Yeah. But that's not going to be something. Jump to the next slide. These are, these are um, this is just from a uh, condition of the team. Um, booklet on how to actually condition rank for pass. So this is just an example of what the level of crack in which um, condition of a footpath does look like each of those things. So by 26, 27 onwards, that would be the state of our footpath in across the program with the level of investment. So if you go back to your previous slide where you've got columns attached to footpaths. Yes. Where, where does the Tubic Valley fit in those numbers? Uh, so, definitively, uh, we do an inspection of our footpaths anywhere. But we know our footpaths here in the shop. Yep, there's a lot of places across our whole network yeah, yeah. of um, Central yeah. Park where our footpaths are from. And we don't understand how much money is being spent on footpaths and everything. Yep, so here we will do um, look at where our um, inspection rate is high risk areas and look at coming in and doing those and trying to establish once in one area to do those. So there will be a point where it's the challenge we have is we can move around and do it in mills and that way. Um, the challenge we have with the pot that we do have is it's going to turn to safety and improvement. So trying to remove any trip. Risk everything like that. So the footpath might look like that, but there might be areas where we fill the stand off and try and crack safe and traversable. We don't get stood on wheels caught in them, and walking trying to wheels caught in them. Um, but that's where there's going to be a challenge between how much renewal we can get in to do versus just having to address safety. So, so our rate payers would like to understand much there. Right, right, but 
Staying straight up there. Yeah. Absolutely, we can pull, pull that information out. Um, and we have to have to go. I mean, and it, and it, it relates to things like a food mode. It should rule that sort of stuff. Yeah. Because they are part of what they do as council. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not saying that the numbers are um, yeah. out of whack with yeah, the and and to communicate. Yep, no, absolutely. And we did do um, that presentation, oh gosh, a year or so ago. Yeah, yeah, we can see see the speed in the city, and we can look at breaking it down um, a little bit. But um, for context around the value um, the city gets in the road space, we uh, next week kicking off um, a revisioning program. And the TV is circa one point five million dollars. Uh, to address remitting and renewing, doing a heap of renewal for the gravel road network. Right? Um, so some of it was done a couple of years ago, or last year, um, and coming and finishing that TV, but that's a significant that is all of our remitting budget for the year has largely been focused on the TV side. So we've got no we've got no um there's nothing coming up for for like that town. People generally oh, okay. talk to that a little yeah, bit. We'll thank you. Um, cool. so, and another piece of work we're going to touch on um, that we're looking at is an unsealed road track strategy. So, um, reviewing our grading frequency, considering network rationalisation, um, so potentially reducing the extent of our network that uh, sees full maintenance from your focusing on key routes. So, there might be examples where the crisscross of the roads in our district that we don't need to maintain every single one of those. We could potentially look at reducing the length of um, Bridge depot and re resilience. So, as we look at potentially not renewing all of our bridge instructions around, do we need to modify another route that's going to be taking more traffic, but reduce maintenance on that? There's no longer um, driveways and network extent. Are we grading driveways essentially that it's road, but actually driveways? And is there an opportunity for road development or different things like that? Actually having a look at those. And extended winter closures, are we opening a road too early, getting a bit tiny enough for a spring to be able to weather again that close? Yes, so just cancel on slow road. Yeah, uh, things like that, like the road actually goes on. Yep. It's a good road. Yep. Long road. Yep. It, it typically yep. our grants get a grade a year or two for about 15 months. Um, but as part of this, we'll be looking at grading frequency to see what they provide. But that's an important route for um, transition and different things like that. But how much investment do we put into that over other things? So that's what this is going to look at. So that's cool. Um, we've done things a certain way. It's around having a fresh look at that um, and around how often we're grading certain applications. So you're saying that some, maybe call them lane wise, maybe, that a council right. land roads, you right. might go uh, give those back to the single user that uses that lane way. Yep. yep, that could be that could be an option instead of based on how much value that's going to bring. Various, yeah, yeah. Um, I've got new probably. Yep. There's probably a fair number of examples where mm -hmm. you potentially get to the last letterbox after driving from sitting the last letterbox reasonably fun. Um, there, there will be examples, and there will also be examples of where there's cross cross the road. Mm -hmm. So, Aurora are looking to give back a lot of posts that are on private land. If you've got two power poles yeah. on your land, they'll say, Well, we're only supplying the you know, first one, the second one, the land is yours. Yeah, and that's potentially a similar thing. We just don't know, um, as we work through this and understand, sort of, um, it's potentially around. Trying to save what work we do, or and can move that into maintaining other lines for home, and the way actually true savings is um, a, an assessment for a start to look at what the size of the carrot is um, and understand now. So that's what we're talking about now. Uh, next slide. Um, bridge construction rules. So we have two tabs: the 25, 26, 26, 27. Um, one of those is. Um, Tags is replaced with a vest, but given it's a true route, so there's going to not be an opportunity for that structure. That's many photo road. Um, and then there's a review, which is clearly a photo just based on um, the bridge strategy approach, and that's for the Scotland structure. So we're talking about that community around that structure as well. Um, we are going one more slide after this. <laughs> Thanks again for the great work on the last 
not in the not in the not in the unless you need to cross up very few transactions. Um, and of course we'll come back and chat with you. Um, but you need to crop up. But twenty seven twenty eight is a new bid to NZTA. That's the start of our next mm -hmm. three year window. We have fifteen structures in that window tagged for either replace replace by this replace with some third party funding. Um, for review, reduce the service. In this window now that we're working in, we're working to understand if every single one of those structures, is there an opportunity for reducing the level of service? Is there an opportunity to do something? Starting conversations with landowners if there is with third party contribution and things like that. So this three year window is filling our information gathering for the next NZCA. Mm -hmm. So um, council, just like we talk about grants coming back in two years, we'll be going to council with what the next three years of virtual management will look like. The and, and we're constantly building that and gaining my understanding about structures and everything like that. And if we can do component renewal or key maintenance on the road all your life, then that's the first cost of this option. We do that. If at the end of its life and any investment is not worth it compared to replacing it, we're not doing that. And then continuing to that conversation. This is a very hard reason I might be easier on the device. Um, but so again, we have our three year bid to NZTA, although that does tag on the plan. Um, so when we talked about the, only getting that 4%, that was the 500,000 for the Pi Heritage Precinct. And that was just a timing carrying over that NZTA money because that project could only go from May to November to work in the period, um, which was uh, lower footfall and different things for that community. All the other projects in yellow um, did not receive NCTA funding. So what we have in the pot for those is 49% of that number. From 26, 27 onwards, sorry, 27, 28 onwards, that's um, a new bid to NZTA. And that is what's sitting in the current long-term planning to pass that year. So that will come back to council again as part of our package for the new NZTA bid. Um, yeah, but there is funding for curb and channel improvements in 27 28, um, but the main projects there um, that are more district wide projects are um, small safety mm -hmm. projects. So we're going to identify minor safety yeah. um, improvements that need to be undertaken, curb and channel improvements, um, new dropped curbs. So we have to do a cutout for the curb just to make that safe to come on and off the footpath and get the edge mark price improvement. So it's the roads. And rural cross section section improvement. So, we have just run through risk to be road, got to the road, another gravel road, road, and comes a profit. And if you miss a bit of way, you can start to drive. Um, so, just identifying those, potentially, that's as simple as double gating some additional signage, um, potentially changing the slight layout, potentially making a seal back, and things like that. There's ways of doing that. Um, but there's, yeah, that's just a list of the improvement areas. It was mentioned before, but well, thanks, we weren't in the room for the, what's happened recently on. Yeah, no, that I've got up with you. Thanks very much. That was really good. And the momentum of the month to go on the sun. Yeah. 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 Green has gone to NZTA, those first three years have gone to NZTA, which we have or have not got funding. Um, 27 28 onwards is our next opportunity to provide some data to NZTA that we need some local share to do this, and we always ask council beforehand to do that before us putting this up to the NZTA. Um, so, so, King George Park, the Perfect. curbing. Yep. So, to get that on that list, yep. what do we have to do? Tell us. Um, we we can have the vote. <laughs> yeah, but and, and we can have the vote, but it would be going the year. So the opportunity is um, to put that up for councils to make a consideration to 100% under if it is going to be in the next two years. It would really? be, there's no money no. from it today, okay. so it will be 100% funding. So let's say $100,000. Yeah. If it goes in for 26, 27 onwards, yeah. um, and it was successful with NTG funding, it's obviously half the cost. Um, and so that could go into a future plan, um, and that could be if the, um, put in the budget now for consideration for that future plan. I still don't quite get the channel curbing at Campbell Park. Is 
Is it a split between council and NZPA? Uh, or is it fully NZPA? No, it can't. Because we get being told it was NZPA staying because it's not so so many. It is, that is the main highway. Um, highway. But that's an improvement along here for the current channel investments and things and that that would be council. So NZPA is going to look after the, the road, um, but the current channel would be. What happens if we get traces and got a, 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 a um, local work team in to do it? You would still have some sort of cost, mm. um, what your cost in, in doing that, but um, a large portion of cost would be correct. Um, and NZC only have. You can steal some steel time. Um, the requirements for NZC and traffic management um, would be significant for working on there. Okay. It's a state highway, so you can't avoid it. You know, like that twin at the end is just ridiculous. And I was watching one poor old guy try and get down the end, it was just extremely slippery. And it, it's, I mean, it's so overdue to be done. It's, it should have been done 40 years ago. Well, yeah, two, two, two years ago, I think, for the Port Lock Permit, one of your guys looked at that. And approached um, NCPR. We put it in, I think. Mean, yeah. Um, and it wasn't successful. Um, yeah. But we had 11 million in for the past three years. Yeah. And only got to 500. Yeah. Um, through the manual plan, all of those other projects got pulled out because they didn't receive any. Yeah. So, like, the current three years. I thought that the process was still continuing. Yes. Yeah, so, that was going to be. Yep. So, put the, into the, the, the question is do you want to? It was, we were told. Well, like, I do. So, so you want to? Let's have another go. I'd like to have another go, Norman. Who's going with you? I thought it was still in the process. Yeah, well, no, sorry. We were talking. We didn't we didn't get the NDTA funding for it. Um and we did have we do have current in the channel improvements there. If you would like that project, we can pass that amount so maybe mm -hmm. things would pass to be in that piece for consideration by council and NDTA. Yeah, that's the most useful that we're talking about. Yes. Yeah, it's going to be busy playing. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be a subsidiary project as part of any master plan, but I think the master plan's going to mm -hmm. take longer to achieve than the time frame we're talking about. Um, our next LTP, we put up a back end for NCCA. We can have that conversation if there are other things or other priorities in the different things. And that points in time as well. So I can go in just like uh, you talked about, you need to put the numbers in for the whole nine years. Um, but that's we will be refining 27, 28 onwards into the time. So we'll put it in. There's an opportunity to relook at what the priorities are, yeah. the price or anything you have it again, cool. and what, what else there is. One other thing, with all the planning that we had, yes. it would be really good if we had some local flight signs. Um, we had one guy that was down the road, he had a step on the side of the road through it and had a light on. And I realised that when it rains over the district, that you know, contractors have a lot of place to cover and yep. a bit mileage to cover. So if we could throw some plain signs in at Paul Johnson's place down in front of Martin and Peter Bivens' place at bottom of Etrip there, <clears throat> and then locally, I did three or four of the game and what even somebody can put them out because the flooding on the road is really high. Really, 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 really. It was at dusk. Doesn't matter, it's our people's safety. Yeah, they need to be in the once again, that'll be an issue. NZTA issue. You can't yeah. just go popping a sign up on a state highway without NZTA. Saying, do it. If somebody mm -hmm. crashes, you know, because they were having that water flowing oh, because you don't speak. That's something QP can pick. Thanks, QP. Right, Gareth, Janice, 15 minute whirlwind tour of community <laughs> facilities. That's the most important part of the world. Yeah. <laughs> you can. Yeah.
Oh, it's super fast. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. Next slide, please. <laughs> Good strong start. <laughs> so, this is a quick overview of your optics and your cathex spending um, for this option fee. You will see that this, these are all draft figures, and you will see there's a big spike in um, year two. If you go to the next slide, because it actually gets explained. Sorry. This is optic split up in a pie drop, and you can see where all the money is getting spent. And there's a demolition cost of $115,000. That's the draw. And I know you're working on the, the minister that's money, but, um, but we put that in case we do an assessment on the building and it can't be recovered. That's why we put those, those, those figures in. And go to the next slide. That basically shows um, all the optic spending, all the high level stuff that's done over the next nine years. Um, so you spend a total of two hundred and five thousand dollars. So if you decide to keep the bottom home, so um, I know you've been working on you know, you've shown some interest. This is right. We're still going to get the building assessed. Um, I mean, especially that being from the from the back side. When I had a look at it, um, the the foundation can definitely even compromise with the stabilizing food. And uh, so we just need to make sure that the building is still safe. Once we once we verify that, then over to you guys to say what you want to do with it. Because effectively, we didn't own the building, we've got the best of that due to us. And um, you know, if we can save asset and save the right for $115,000 for demolishing and create a, a nice activity over there, great. So we're spending $9,000 on the squash court. That's you know, bare minimum maintenance that yeah. And um, because the building's been given back to us, so we do, as long as we've got it, we have to make sure it's for the time. And that's one of the things. Yeah. Sure could we get rid of that building? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, if, if it's, like, I don't want to sit on the squash people's toes, but I don't know. Then I just mentioned it all. So, we, or, so it's just come back to you. Mm -hmm. right? So the yeah. squash court basically said there's no activities um, there. Um, so I can't remember the guy, I think it was Russell. Russell. Yeah. I was going to say, Russell was yeah. hot on. Well, he actually wanted the first he wanted me to allow him to build a house there. So if someone in there and I said that's not going to happen. Um then he tried to revitalize a bit of the squash, nothing came to fruition. We're basically sitting with this building, we haven't had the opportunity to assess. Um I think it's difficult to move. You know, I'm just thinking back to the I think that's um concrete base and foundation. You're yeah. gonna, you're gonna, you won't be able to do that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same we can about yeah. site and sell the land. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how realistic is that $1,000 a year for the next nine years? Well, it's just been the next one. The cost of holding that property is $9,000 for nine years. It, nothing. It's nothing. Really. No. And, and to demolish it, you're looking at nine hundred. Yeah. 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 So that sounds like this. And we've just got it there. So, I think we need to do all these things and look at different ways. Okay. And in the meantime, we'll keep basic maintenance so that we keep it for yeah. You know, when a building deteriorates, then you really go down. Mm -hmm. So we jump to the next slide. So the CapEx, um, your big stuff is earthquake strengthening and some um, complete seating. Actually, go to the next slide if you do that. Let's just go to the graph to the next one. Um, it's the seat replacements and also the theater, energy, lighting upgrade, um, a little bit more painting, and then of course the earth function of the middle platform, which is a substantial quality that in the field. Now we will be discussing this, as all know yeah, we will be discussing this um along with the conversation on the vision for the river with council. Um so all buildings will be um, do you get one point to do your earthquake? Uh, you mean the construction rate or the system? It, it, the construction. Uh, so we haven't gone to bid for that, so I don't know who the earthquake will. We'll go to multiple. And if we did it as a group, you'd probably get a better uh, outcome because it's better procurement services. Um, but if it's done in a different year, you'd probably do the marshal in different countries. I don't know if with a lot of commercial property, like some of the Sunday earthquake, the quotes do earthquakes, but you have absolutely none. Taking a look at the for example, 
it was absolutely crazy that I'm going to have to close for three months. And then we got a team in that could do it um, very quickly without having to close. And it was a hell of a lot cheaper. Yeah. Um, and I was just wondering if there's uh, really felt that some of the expenses actually um, the engineers that can do it in a more clever way and a lot cheaper than some of the other companies. Yeah, so we, we use a varied amount of engineers after a lot of experience in this space. I do push back a lot. Um, one of the quotes we had in for a DSA on one particular hall was about one and a half million dollars. Um, and the paid design that they've done was quite ridiculous. I pushed back against it, I could go to that one. Oh, so, um, yeah, pretty comfortable yeah. in this space, and we'll get the best people to do your job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, that's just giving you a quick update on the spec. It's MBS, so it's National Building Standing Up Rating, which is um, 20%. The um, national level for New Zealand is 34% acceptable. So, yeah. yeah. Do you get different types? Yeah, yeah you, you get different types of wood cuts, right? So you get ones that run in horizontal, yeah. and all those buildings that are done block wood with no reinforcement, that's good enough. We're taking that for ones vertical, that building will be fine. So, what, uh, what level of earthquake are you looking at? Are you looking at like six? Or? This, this one would be six to ten. National building standard. So, that's, that's effectively an IR3, which means it. Um, It'll allow enough time for people to get out of the building if the earthquake occurs. Um, and it'll come to you. Earthquake was already set. I don't know. We can't do that. We can't do that. We can't do that. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the medium strength. So that, that changes the different parts of the community. Yeah. And so in the legislation, John Act 2004, it just talks about the medium strength. Yeah. So we can't give it in the class of about 5 to 4, 6.7. It says the medium strength. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. it doesn't it doesn't make questions what part of this question is. Looks like Do you want to talk Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, that, that, that one. So the Miller State Hall, sorry, um, I did correct one other version of this. They didn't come back come back to council the Miller State, that's incorrect. Nice um committee are very motivated for all committee and they manage a lot of the day to day issues and a lot of the um, day to day minor maintenance things. So the only maintenance we pick up is, is major maintenance, um, pretty much. Um, so that second bullet point for increase. They have pretty high use of, of the hall and it's uh, considered to be an isolated community. So if you went to your 60 percent um, and the hall will still assess this time and could be used as a um, uh, community. Um, well, uh, yeah, yeah, the community could, could go there. Yeah. And that's the end of our presentation. No, <laughs> super cool. You've still got 90 seconds before you've used the five minute mark. <laughs> You don't want me to say it. Uh, David, learn. Uh, uh, no, no, I mean, learn from Garrett. Uh, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> no, don't learn from me. How many buildings have we got in the building? Five. Well, I, I know we've got a total of about 158 of the whole district. I couldn't tell you exactly how many we've got in the whole time. Well, as yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's not. He's got lots of time. Oh. <laughs> and it feels weird to be so quick. I can't find any other ones. No, it comes to the Android. No, it's a lot of things. All right. Um, so, now these spaces will kick them off. And then I've just got another couple of small slides that can split there, if that's okay for the um, library or the rest of the Apple Store. Uh, well, they're not. They're, they're about the same size as these slides. They'll be on the same screen. How long's David got? Five minutes. Okay, they're not ready. Right. So <laughs> our, our our brief from council is um, status quo. Or well, if we can try and see the station cost somewhere. Yeah, great example. Being efficient. So let's go through here. Um, next slide, thanks, Sarah. And one of the things we just talked about is what that is. Small story, 
So we're just kind of going to go through this so you can see roughly what we're spending in value per year. And it's kind of we're making the assumption every year. You don't need the numbers on the file. Yeah. Yeah. So do you mind just talking through that? What is the operational budget? So this is ten years. So this is what we've spent in the last uh, two years and previous, and then what we've got budgeted for the next uh, next year from one July. So it's just basic, just pretty much the same as we've got a little bit of inflation there, a couple of extra costs for yeah. things. Can't quite see that either. Yeah. yeah. Do you want my computer, Gordon? I'm um, off for yeah, yeah. yeah, so we've put, as we said earlier, we've put those costs in from the vendors on some of the um, cost codes and we and we'll just answer that. So it's gone up a little bit from what we did until we need one fifty two or up to one seventy three and and twenty five twenty six subjects. Yeah. You can see the main driver that's listed. Um, yeah, yeah, he describes you and you know, waste is quite mm -hmm. well. And the little bins here, little bins in town, they get hammered pretty damn long again, people coming through, mm -hmm. putting stuff in. So we often need to build the car today. So that's the whole. As it's here, we're looking at putting bigger bins in. We're looking at doing that. Yeah. Okay. And ones that, yeah, ones that are put really bins and Think that the whole more probably take on the really good things. You're actually on the wrong side of the street, yeah. Right? yeah. Like the triangle, it's like a triangle. Value business, that's right. Yeah. Well, the, the 24 25 figure doesn't sum that up, doesn't come to 154. Um, okay, what does it come to? About 120 and 10 on the end of the is it the missing 30? Oh no, because that's the that's your verges. Yeah, but not being put back into another yeah. crossing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Man for the following year. You're missing twenty six thousand. Oh. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what you're telling. So that well, we are looking at the twenty five in fifty area, it doesn't sound mm -hmm. like the following year's not what I want. Yeah. <laughs> but this in the twenty twenty four to twenty uh, sorry, twenty four, twenty five, twenty five, twenty six is about a twenty five percent increase in litter. Oh, yeah. And it's get hammered in with litter, as I said, we have been it's really hard to judge. Um and in fact litter is a district wide cost anyway. So it's budgeted the cost of this district district now, but it's just showing there what the actual cost is for the pedestal park here. Mm -hmm. So it comes out of the job and it comes out of that um wider litter rate. So that's <coughs> that council Council workers in South is an environment with these things. So this is, this is the Delta workers, and we also have to, you know, we have to pay the dump fee, so the dump fee mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. It's all the charges for the end there as well. So council's not a new bill, those charges either. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, 169 April 2, I think. On, on okay. Right, we'll create that. And then Jill, for our parks contracts, we have a pilot bus fund, that's the so, so capital stuff, this is probably something to look at if there's anything here that um here we can only go through. So we've got some playground in yours coming up. The board will remember that we took out yeah. um 
slide a little while ago, so that'll be coming. Well, those renewals will be coming back around the boy and 27, 28, so not part of the specific LTP, but. Yeah, we found that with playground we have to do five days and nuts, and there's some work you need to get, we're getting to the end of the year. Find some new equipment. So do you, it's do not only just in here, it's also um playing rock and down the road as well. But all councils get their playground equipment from the same company, or do you? No, we get the best job. For us, there's lots of options in three or right. four different playground companies. Okay, and so when we talk about the slide, it wasn't really the slide. No, we're not here because I think otherwise no. we'd go, oh my god, there's a really expensive slide, but it wasn't. That's why I put the playground yeah. stuff yeah. now, yeah. rather than the slide or the roundabout. Yeah. 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 We need a flying box here. Yeah. <laughs> great hill for so us. So we're going to do a pay strategy over the next six or twelve months and that'll help us determine um uh where and what we want from there as for play for their children, because you know swings and size is pretty old fashioned when they're looking at more insecure of natural type plays and a lot of our play facilities have very poor uh Experiences for kids and, and it doesn't help develop their yeah, core motor skills and their hand eye core motor skills. Jumping jobs just to um, have play equipment because that one in Geneva is bloody awful. The new one on the, the main street? In the botanical oh, gardens. Sure. No, that is right. The main street with the big long. I wish I'd been here first year. I think that's why we want to have to play strategy so we get that right. And we can get that information better. So, what are you going to do there? Well, it's on the rear of the dinner over the months ago. We'll come with you, with you and Grass, and we'll talk to the kids. Cool. Yeah. Right. So that's why we'll get the kids' board and stuff. Yeah. And as part of the investment, so we will do want to invest money in playground through a scattergun approach that we do now, or we're going to focus on some key areas. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Sorry, this is just something I just wanted to share with all of our libraries across the district. Because the last two years we've been really fortunate to have some federal funding come through our doors and it came with things like RFID, which has helped we see the machine just out here and it's helped speed up some of the services that we offer at self checkout. Um, we've also implemented APNK as well. It means, means that people who um, have used APNK at one library can come through here and log in with nice and easily and all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, grab the white tours and stuff. Libraries. So, in the last couple of years, we have invested um, a fairly good chunk as a council into our libraries. And so, this year, we're sort of going to go status quo with our libraries. And in 12 months' time, we're to put together with all the boards the library strategy on how are we servicing our outlying universities. We had a conversation here around, you know, we're struggling for volunteers at most flat library and all of that kind of stuff. Are we, are we supporting our outlying communities in the best way possible? Or do we need to look at that differently? What would we like to have as a council when it comes to the distance we want people to be living from a library and how they connect with them? So in 12 months' time, that will be a strategy that we worked up in-house, myself, Amy, our libraries manager, and our collections manager. Um, and we'll be coming around the board for getting feedback and understanding what's important to them. We need to invest more, invest less. Um, you know, <coughs> the pace of libraries is changing, as you guys have mentioned, the demographics. But just an interesting thing here that Roxborough, most of our sites have sort of returned to pre COVID, if not slightly past. Roxborough's, um, this is just door counter numbers. Roxborough, so this site we're at here, um, is just behind. Um, <coughs> COVID, but we're there or thereabouts, pretty much, including here on return to pre COVID numbers. And so we'd expect that to keep going north and growing community and things. So we do have to look at how we're doing things, so we do it the best way possible. Um, and we'll do that through this long term plan. Um, Sorry, so the numbers are broad COVID. Yeah, people coming in through the <coughs> So they're not necessarily library use, so library is a generic term. Yeah, yeah. So, so here it's building houses because it's a company with a size and high So it's people coming in store from yeah. We we want all one each. Yeah. So yeah. I love the facility here. There are girls who are going to be Yeah, part of the very good. Yeah, yeah. We're very excited that we've got here. So. You referred to the changing face of library. Yeah. Are you talking about the book library or are you talking about the pump students? Um, I'm talking probably more about book library and I guess community hub type thing because what we're seeing in other libraries is school kids right through. So, you know, international workers coming in, it's a quiet time, sit down, mm. use the Wi Fi, all of that kind of stuff. And the way most of our facilities are set up is being sort of a bit of a transactional book library. And they're changing a bit to be in that sort of digital space, that community hub, drop in centre. It's probably one of the last free places that people have just come in all the time. And I think it's not sure when this council will last sort of check in with the community on what it needs mm -hmm. for libraries. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, we'll um, hold the fall for this year with the idea of kicking off the strategy so we can have that conversation with that community. Um, but it's an interesting concept because. I can't remember the last time I went to the library. Yeah, well, you just walked through one. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why they do. Similarly, not into a library. Oh, section. I can show you around the if you want. <laughs> <laughs> get in, we'll show you where you signed up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, could, like it's a, it's, it's a cost to the rate, though. Yeah. But the, the cost. Would be far away by the social Yeah, yeah. And so just, just a round number here. Mm -hmm. We operate seven libraries across the districts, uh, employ about 20 staff. Mm -hmm. We have um on an annual year we spend about a hundred to hundred and twenty thousand dollars on books, and we're holding probably half a million six hundred thousand books that are focused on digital. Um we've got digital um, a digital app that we invest in, mm -hmm. and we do all that across the district for about a million bucks. Yeah. Um, 
No worries. Yeah, slightly open. The books depreciate them, though. Did you depreciate Yeah, we depreciate them over 10 years. Yeah. So, so most most councils depreciate them over probably seven or eight. We do keep them a little bit longer. Um, people like them who haven't been through. <laughs> slow rep, slow rep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we're also looking to talk to council about you know, how can we create revenue as well. Yeah. And so depending on the size of the building and, and where the building is, you, you know, there could be an opportunity to have like a hot desk or someone that's treating yeah. food for the day, like a worker that just needs well, a Yeah, they need yeah. office. But, you know, you might want a private little room that you pay $10 to have that room for half an hour oh, or whatever. Yeah. And then you can make a private phone call without everyone hearing you. You can go on Zoom, you know, like you're driving through. Mm -hmm. You've got to be on the team's meeting at 5 o'clock. You can come in here, do that, pay your 10 bucks. You know, so it could be a way that we could generate a little bit of revenue as well yeah. for our library site. If we, and like this meeting room is a great example when that group initiated this room to be used for the whole community mm -hmm. council meeting. Mm -hmm. And so all of our volunteer groups that come and have meetings here, we don't have to pay for our own space. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have to pay the t-shirt, we don't have to pay any kind of yeah. expense and we can come and use this facility. The only thing that annoys me and is, is, is that whole um when I run the information center and then I go through three different accents with the whole two reports. Yeah. So if I was switch the high or Veronica. Oh, yeah. And now I've got to go through that whole thing as well. And you know, I wonder how much those court get up to the court cost to run. Yeah. And you know, if I can't look up here, you know, I go through so there's three different accents on this one. Yeah, I thought it was changed to just one person. Because we've got one thing. <laughs> the last time I went, the last time I rang, you know, there was there were three. And I thought, is it, you know, thank I wonder how much it costs the council to install all that equipment and 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 if it's actually necessary. Yeah. You know, because if it's if it doesn't work, the phone just doesn't make way. I'm just fine, but I might give you guys to make next few more comments to show some signals here. So the written wild down is and the savings of the we will deliver that all through something. Yeah. Um and then just the next one, I'll just flip through really quickly just on light there. Um and then now this is this is his numbers which will break down. So the Miller's flat for this year is now forty seven thousand the Essentially, the operational grant that will be paid over the entire season, about 23, well, 25,000 nearly has been paid out so far this year. Yeah. Just a couple of things that I mentioned. Yeah. There's some painting that they want to do and a few other bits and pieces. We also operate a plant in there where we have, um, given it's a council owned facility, we depreciate the plants. Obviously, that's going to be nowhere near enough that the thing, the plant blew up, that, you know, $15,000 a year would cover it. But, we, we do appreciate the plant minimally over that time. Um, the rock recall, as Sally mentioned, there was a top up in the grant just in the last year. So the um, council resolution back in 2012 was 30 odd thousand over the round of 38. Plus, we had 17 in inflation come through. Um, and so, about sort of that 57 ish thousand. And then next year, the suggestion. Just for the facility to break even for 70,000. And I think um, once we have a conversation with the Trust, just around what their TMU making is going to be for well um, uh, I think it would be wise that what, what Council does, that much depreciation is essentially saving for breakages in the future. Mm -hmm. We'll go about doing that given the trust loan at all. So, you won't be putting money away for a rainy day. And I think that's one of the conversations that we need to have with the trust is going, hey, at year five, I mean, you want eight pumps need motor hole, how are we going to find that? So um, I'll do that through the LCP. I think I think that's everything that we put in for um, year two of the LCP will be okay for that, so that year two and three. But I think year four, there's a couple of the recent things that the trust has really been able to do. Um, but that's probably a good amount to cover, not being too ambitious with the revenue. Hopefully, you know, some more Coca Cola and dollar mixtures than more than what we thought. But so I do have one question though. So yeah. this year we got paid out our 35. Yeah. 
and we didn't get our inflation adjustment, so we're actually going to be negative this year. Yeah. So will we get a top up this year to make it up to what we need? So we'll probably have to have that discussion, I would say, yeah. because you won't be able to operate with that. So, mm, no. so whether, whether it comes through this year or that mm. spend that becomes a better, mm, yeah. that's going to be a conversation that we need to have. Mm. Yeah. None of the fact been going up over the years, the grain. Yeah. Um, some of the eggs I've got in the best like some of my volunteers, they're going to explore in the electricity and the painting as well. That's a great problem. And chemicals aren't being you know, cheap or anything. You know. Okay, that's good. We've made a few oh. changes. Yeah, they're yeah, expensive upfront. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. For a season of course, probably not worth that. Right. Yeah. Right, the next slide, Sarah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Boom. Look at that. Only like two minutes over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All that time that Gareth made up. Was well spent with David. Yes, we did. <laughs> Settle up, everybody. So, uh, you are not going to get community vision today. Community vision is going to come back to you when Julie comes back to you in order because you have a delegations workshop that you need to go through, which Saskia will lead you through. So, I will come back to you in December when Julie comes in this chat. But, but can I just loop back to community grants one more time? <laughs> I, I, I can, we can allocate $10,000 a year for the next two years for community grants, but we zero wise it on the budget. And you just draw down from your reserve. Yeah. And if you can then show the council that you can spend that $10,000 in the next two years, when it comes to the next LTP, you've got the case. And so you've got $20,000 in reserves for community grants. If you say, let's spend $10,000 a year for the next two years, you, that means you don't have to rate your community next year or the year after, and you've got even more money to give them what they want you to have. Another bloody good sign. Well, I think we should do that because I think we owe that to our community and we owe it to save the money if we can. And, if got and, and you can publicise the value of $10,000. What's the first part of that? You know, we'll you've you got reserves of 20,000 in community yeah, growth. So the next two years, you draw that down. So you've got ten thousand dollars a year in the next two financial years, exactly. and we don't you don't rate your community for community grants because you've so got it goes zero 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 zero. Yeah. zero but you've got ten thousand ten thousand. Well, I'm just going to sit here in two years' time. So we you know, spent ten from here, ten from you. Well, you've got ten. Then you've got twenty. Yeah. Then the yeah. Back right now. Yeah. You were so the conversation is right right right. we go. We're going from zero to ten. Yeah. Well, okay. You're rating your community. And if you have a track record of spending against that, then you can justify that. Makes sense. What's the so, going to be over the next nine years? We don't, we don't know it. Because we, we're it? still plugging in the numbers. And yeah. um, well, so we literally don't know. So we've done that. We've done that, 100, we've done that 25 million borrowed now. At the end of nine years, it's going to be actually. Twenty-five million is probably that we'll be borrowing. Oh, that will be cheap as well. We buy a ton of cash. Kind of cash. <laughs> so, so that's difficult. So our our rates are going to go up anyway. I think in Southland they're looking at two hundred and twenty-eight cents. Southland's nine years. I'm over. If we're looking at, at that, um, yeah. estimates on water. If you're mm -hmm. paying, let's just say we're paying on seven hundred mm -hmm. a year on water. By twenty twenty-four, you're paying four thousand a year. We had a um sample the we that we were anticipating, so that will be pushed out slightly. Um but the was very quick and the other signs what they were trying to do were. So how much of that is mandated and how much does it fuel? Uh, well, we, we comply with the law, but we will comply to the minimum standard possible. Yeah. So yeah. if you look at the Lake Rocks for uh, uh, Wastewater Treatment Scheme, they'll tell us the standard that we have to meet 
So my understanding is it's going to be three options for us to discharge the water. We'll take the one that we know we can meet at the least price to the yeah. end. But there's a difference so, between the government and that's the government telling and 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 amendments. Amendments are the government's Well, it's uh, well, the three waters is enshrined in legislation. Mm -hmm. Later, first mm -hmm. Wednesday. And um, just the water saying So um, that, and it's not just two grant across our whole, oh, yeah, yeah. whole area. Um, we do have pockets where, for whatever reason, um, we've got our program for the room, maybe, or we just spend the money we would have to put on Murray and Reserve. And technically, that's just not the fact because that means we have money from our rate payers, which we pay for our rate payers that we're going to spend it on. I know, build in any playground, and for whatever reason, we're going to do it, and it's gone into our reserves. Um, so for us to actually build up a healthy bank balance, um, we do is actually do a risk of starting mm -hmm. them. They have got a spot in the and they've got money to take the field tax. Um, so it's something that we'll do to look at. So that's really important. Um, yeah, so they have some capital yeah. to do that. Um, and it's not just about taking or no, what we should use the spend that has been on the ground. Um, and that's and still um, um Foundation of tax that we have um, for the decision for grants. Um, so if you're spending 10,000 a year or 12,000 or whatever that's going to be like, it's justified need, it's a justifiable increase coming um, through if you want to put 10 to 12,000. Um, thank you. Um, so that's the first one. Um, one more minute then. <laughs> oh, I gave all this. Uh, well, actually, this really trust me to start right now. Just on, just on, <laughs> obviously, that's one thing you just said. Yeah. Um, that's, that'll be something that we sort of bring back regularly so you can keep constantly going to the way it has. But as your directions to me, you're comfortable with sitting out there and Mark, you and I will come down to the first back, trust and unlock to make a further conversation with them. Understanding what we'll do myself as well. As well. Yeah. Um, but I think if it's sort of got your good thing, we will get up that rose because that's what we've got the rise before. I, I still think really fine, but just given we're looking to employ two or three lifeguards, but I do think that that's a reasonable number to be able to spend in the valley on the for the next couple. Oh, and you've sort of got a right to and, and, you know. And so, you know, Peter and Sassy's point, that's an awesome decision you've got from the hospital going out here to be able to, you know, yeah. offset it somehow. Yeah. 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 So. Very good. Right. So, if we change our position on Peter's recommendation, you so just, yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. driving us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's no, we, so it's not that well, That's what will get plugged into the numbers, and that's how we we'll work forward. So we're going to bring a payment forward, but if you change your mind for the reasons from now and then, uh, there's still an opportunity. Uh, so I don't think you want to improve it, but that's the thing for my mind. Um, so you can make a change that and make it. But as a base level, could you put 5,000 in for year three, four, five, six? The future years? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So five or six thousand. Seven. Seven thousand for years. Beyond. Beyond. Yeah. 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 Yeah
we can plug something in, but yeah. I think that goes a long way to meeting some of your needs. Because right. it talks about the growth here. It does, and I think that what we are looking for is probably the next level of detail. Yeah. It would be good to have council and the ORC, so you've got the next, you've got um, You've got Anne and Council that is doing the spatial plan here, and then you've got the ORC doing its, its hazards area, which is it's, it's, it's actually superimposed on it's the spatial plan. On the, but it would be good to get both Council and ORC here, you know, so that so that, that can be knitted together. Yeah, because exactly. parts of, a little few parts of, of the spatial plan are wrong. Um, and from Council point of view, it's human error stuff. And then so with the with the hazard thing, there's there's no hazards really clearly um, hazards. So maybe maybe we need a couple of boots on the ground to go around the district and actually have a have a look at at what's been written out in spatial plan and then and then make two counts. Yes, it has. Yeah. 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 With um, you've had that conversation. Yes, that was talking about. Yes, but there needs to be some adjustments made to. Well, that's, that's what's happening. And 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 that's what's and Anne said exactly that, that ORC are refining mm -hmm. the, the hazards. Yeah. Because that bit down is that that has been passed, well, it's flat that has been passed in the flood zone, it's not a flood zone, and I look out about that the other day, so that hasn't come. When, when they came, oh, the evening that we had, yeah, yeah. We had so, um, but they explained yeah. how the data that they have presented has been compiled and they admit that it yeah. 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 gets refined and refined and refined. Yeah, yep. absolutely. But the work that goes into redefining it or giving it greater information is huge. Yes, absolutely. It's not just. Yeah, because it's very easy to do the first draft, it's the second, yeah. the third, and the fourth version. Sure. Yeah. 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 The amount of work and time that's going into the city of Bali Station Farm, I mean, is respectfully. There's more than one taking place with the phone while you can see. Yeah, but they're not going to be able to do that. What's the draft? Yeah. All the time the conversation to be solved. That's the concern of that. I understand, Richard. No, 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 that's nice. What was the driver behind that extra time? The amount of conversations on taking place in relation to the development of our project. The consultation. The community engagement. We need to have the sort of spoken conversations where the community is going to happen. Um, I'm very conscious that this delegation's workshop is meant to take an hour. It's meant to be out of the room in 59 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, oh, I'm just confirming. No change from what you said earlier is your priorities. I presume mm -hmm. not, but I just want to double up that the footpaths and Cuban Kendall's Park. Well, that would get worked into your master plan piece of work, right? Yeah. yeah. I'd say that the Kendall's Park Cuban Channel will have all the master plan. Advance that again, as you discussed with QP. And, and if we went ahead with the Minister Force Hub, Force recreation hub that goes ahead, then that 120,000 demo may not happen. Then again, it may because we're not that not much suggested that that could be used for enhancement rather than yep. demolition. Yep, okay. We need, we need the footpath, the footpath between old people's home and the supermarket needs to be attended to, and the, the mess that's outside the side street at the supermarket. Needs to be attended to and George and George That's in, in part of his work. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> right. Okay. So yeah. I'll loop back with you, Paul, and keep progress in that piece. And then we'll, I'll come back to do my workshop mm -hmm. next month. Pass over to Saskia now. I have to run because I've got to go back to the office briefly. Um, I'll see you.
next time. Next time. Next time. <laughs> Thank you. Christmas, uh, Christmas lunch, is it? <laughs> Just for when it's on board, what will we put in the paper? Normally, um, about, we have some big council needs to approve money out of reserves, just as cash, I think. So, what we'll do, you know, where you get to in the next meeting, in our um, resolution up to council, what we will we'll get for the board is approval to spend up to $20,000, whatever the amount is in the reserves, that amount. So, that means over the next two years, we won't need to. Um, give any council approval that we're not very good, so that will we won't go through that thing we did last time. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And with, with, with uh, Curtis, yeah. the, the rest of the paperwork we deal with offline, yeah. do we? Yeah, yeah, so he, uh, he will attend the next one. Yeah. Yeah. We'll work out what I talked about and we talked about the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we get Russ on your computer? Yes, I've got it. Yeah. 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 Sorry, it's been a long day um, for the board. Um, so you recall that we started this, oh goodness, um, earlier this year, um, and we, uh, the feedback was very strong actually, um, including from this board, that hang on, we're putting delegations ahead of um, Districtisation, let's see what happens with the districtisation because then um, how we will follow the decision of districtisation. So you were all well aware um, that decision was made by um, council recently, which was essentially to uh, district districtise a lot of the infection bar the grants we were talking about. So why am I going to hold on thinking around your delegations and on what the board is doing like today? So um, in that very first draft, Back in January, well, I've got some paper copies, but it's easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what we could have done in the original department back in February, we could actually essentially just put in the positive powers, which really spinning it out. And what was reflected in our first second with this is a very important role in the community or advocating for the community. So when Wayne and I took another look at it, what we essentially did um, was scrub our first camp back in, in February, and essentially, if you look at the second document, but they're very similar to the document, because what we've basically um, done, yeah, yeah, the second attachment, so we've got two very similar looking at here. Well, we've got page 10 on this page one. So page 10, that's the um, current, so the one that's labeled page, page 10 is current delegations, and the one labeled page one is for our of the new delegations. Um, and we've put more in here, essentially mirroring what we previously had. So rather than power to get, we've got power to advise. So we've got, um, and we thought that made it um, much clearer around um, what was actually intended um, rather than being silent on it. Um, so essentially today, what we're wanting um, is some feedback from the board you think this um, captures the feedback from the board um, and any other other tweets? Obviously, we, we need to um, follow what council has decided on digitalisation, so we can't be adding in um, powers that are no longer there. But just really keen for a conversation um, from from you or feedback from you, sorry, around whether or not you think this is more hitting the mark um, than what we had earlier in the year. We need to take our words on. The power oh, yeah, 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 upside down. So if you look at yeah. you know, the other version, you've got powers to act. Oh, mm -hmm. powers to act oh, on, yeah. So the powers to act, yeah. The first that we make decisions, yeah. The powers to advise, yeah. The first that we make recommendations, yes. Right. So we can, so we, we, yes. We've lost the, uh, I guess, the, uh, the ability to make decisions on recommendation other than just recommend that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what we have done, that's actually right, and what we have done, which is page three of that second attachment, um, the power to act. So we, we made sure that it was still there. Um, so that's the problem power to act that um, still will remain under the delegation. So that's the grants and donations, um, main um, roads and reserves. Um, and um, your ability to um, 
that in the council member did the comment, but say that the previous um, session on page two um, is to make it clearer around um, the involvement of the board and really key decisions. Um, he has talked to us, um, his staff, about his expectation of the material that has come to the boards um, for feedback for those two councils that have been you know, matched that really impact the board. Um, so that's where that power of advice comes in that we, we, we bring you material that's going up to council that we get feedback from the board that forms part of the council report. And so we look at the material um, that we bought and they um, agree or disagree, what you think that may be. Um, so that's quite clear in the paper that goes to council that this board has had a was um, what it was to be fair on our first it wasn't a thing. So hopefully we can do anything. When you say papers of working to the council, uh, to, to the staff, to us, yeah, about the information that comes to us, is it more contained or is it, when I say contained, is it more bigger picture stuff or is it? So, so really, I've been heading much like today, yeah. trying to bring the stuff that's yeah. relevant to the community boards, voting, water, those sorts of things that pertain to the this community board, yeah. make sure that those things, even though they've previously been justified, but you know, you, you have a view. If, if we're going to do the just done the slash one, but if we were to do those again, we'd, we'd make sure we circle around the community board in advance of that. So you're aware of the capital program, the operational program that's sort of run through. So we just have to come up with, we've got to feel our way through this yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was asking if you be relevant. Doing questions about arms and yeah, that's right. yeah. things like that. So it's pretty, that's important to us in terms of a being able to say yes or no. You know, we think that should be yeah. a priority, or we agree with that it's a yeah. priority, or something like that. But us get communication on them. Yeah. Just like us getting all of the money for the road, all the programs on board the budget for the whole district is going to be a key yeah. I mean, that is yeah. a really good thing to tell our community. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So, cool. like each month, like th this is saying what we can do and what we uh, advise and, and, and our, our feeling for the community sentiment. But yeah, we need some feedback back about A, what has been done, and B, what's going to be done. Yeah. And that's where the um, lady off of the Role that it has been from the board is really important. Is um, you know, because every board is different um, in our communities to, to what is the focus and what's really important for them. Yeah. And here again, that's really important for the TV board. So that's Dylan's role to, to work with us to make sure that stuff is coming coming to us. As Pete says, we are sort of um, we're evolving this as we go, um, but definitely um, yeah. my conversations with Peter is, is really. Um, because you're such a critical part of the community, you are the community board's got to make sure that's um, reflected. Um, you know, if we're doing something that, um, you know, you get feedback from the community that that's not going to work for, hey, this is a bit of priority. We, we need to get, we need to be this until we get it first rather than afterwards. Yeah. We've done it. And we have it in my time here, excuse me, um, things like roading and tree waters, the enterprise services, that's the first LGP presentation I've been at a board. And basically, um, the other day, we were talking about district stuff um, with the boards first. Usually, they all get approved in the LGP, and you'll hear about the radio yeah. program or the three waters um, stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, it's much yeah. more yeah. about involving you guys in that living. Well, and that's what will make this work. Yeah. And that was really yeah. clear that yeah. I didn't see that the other boards were. Yeah. yeah. Well, without without that, um, I guess structurally mm -hmm. behind something mm -hmm. we can find whatever we like. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I think um mm -hmm. like we've got a lot of opportunity. Um we're at CP already reckoning woods for an independent woods for part in the West. And with this new park strategy coming out and they want to bring that to the to the community boards. I think community boards would be really involved in that. And um because again we know we know our district and we know the wants, <coughs> but I reckon we've got a lot, lot of opportunity to kind of shake that up to the Tibet Valley and to um, communicate that to our different community groups. If, if there's something that a group wants to do, this is how we can help you 
do that. It's the big break that other groups want to take things on because it's not going to cost the rate pay, you know? That's right. So, you know, improves our, you know, improves our, um, the activities and things we've got to do in the system. And, um, and as we work through this, this new way of working, um, just to give you assurance, this is a living document. Um, well, I don't know how many times we've tried to we had we could not pay our next year, needed our register of donations, we sent it a few times mm -hmm. Um So if we put this in place and go, oh, that's not quite right, um, there is an opportunity, you know, if we're feeling that we think about this right, um, that we can, um, you know, feedback from the other board, we can go to council and say, we would like uh, this change or we can this be um, changed. And it gets a thorough review um, every trading as well. So this will get um, the whole document. Yeah. So the stuff that currently goes on what we call our status reports, that sort of table, um, you know, those, those status reports will still continue coming through? That's a really good question, and my belief is they should. Sarah, have you made Yeah, I think so, and if I make that, that yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we're trying to use the government support as more of a tool, and you've spoken a lot about communication throughout the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, couple of other boards we've been doing just a works update. So going with by each division, just uh, having an update on that governance piece and just so that you are really yeah. um up to date on what is happening, yeah. even if it is district level, um, yeah. so that the stuff that relates to your board um, yeah. is fed through by that process. So we'd have that you mentioned the works update by division You're talking about three waters building and stuff. Yeah. So we we can have that and That'd be great. What, yeah. what you're pleased with, um, by a as well. And, and most, yeah, well, what, I mean, on a quarterly basis, that's unlikely to change because that would set up a forward work program yeah. and, and and that sort of stuff. So you won't see much variation that until something drops off or something. So right. it's not going to be, I don't expect that's going to change too much because once we try and set the annual program, we've been yeah. set out. No, yeah, we don't change We don't want to see that. That's what the annual report's for. Yeah, but like, I know that, but the, the progress through the year, oh, that's right. people can say, we can be told that, yeah, we're on track. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we don't, don't normally see those books, books reports. No, 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 no um, proponent of that at the outset is that who buys your questions when you ain't asked? Yeah. So, how much money is being paid for podcasts? We keep talking about podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, and you go, I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's not what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's quite, I guess, mean, working with Dylan um, and striking that right balance because we've all been in this field question and quite, um, so if you get any of those, please go straight. And he'll reach out to one of us and, and we'll get the answer for you. Yeah. Um, because um, you don't want to be in a situation before where you're getting so much information that it's just what we do. Um, so, it probably is a good conversation for this board to have around, you know, what are you doing in the community? Where are the areas that you get the most questions? What would you like to have um, regular verbal updates or how is that looks um, from our activity managers? Yeah. The original request to Dylan was around the website. What's that in the period? Yeah. yeah. What, what, what's the incentive on what's the period? Yeah. 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 Yeah
Peter covers the intention um, and the role of the board. Um, what we're going to do is have a summer conversation with each of the, the boards. And if there's something that dramatic that comes from one of the boards that we haven't covered here, Sarah will look back into this board in case we have a different view. Um, because, of course, we don't want to be changing stuff and talk to the money is photo. Um, you guys aren't aware of it, so we'll make sure the board is all informed if there's any proposed changes. Um, we'll just be given an opportunity. Um, they probably will be able to email and talk to those if you're going up to be stuck for me. All right. And yeah. Steve, let's just monitor this and then see how it goes and we can tweak if needed. Oh, thank you. Can we say some you're the fastest of the day. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> and we haven't even got our alarm clock. Yeah. <laughs> Um, please get me in China to tell you. Yeah, we've got another half an hour. Do you want to come back? I'll give Joe. I'll give Joe. Yeah. Plug it out here. Which flat? Do you want to show me that farm that you're referring to? So here's another flat here. This is the. That's actually it's not even slash. Where is that? Anything down? Where is the other? You know where um 